Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And a little bit over a week ago, I told you guys about the 30 for 30 mega bundle on the Unity Asset Store. And I asked you guys if there was a single asset in there that you'd like to see me cover in more depth. Now, not giving you a lot of time left. There's going to be about three days remaining in this bundle if you're interested. But the asset the majority of people seem to be interested in is this one, the Atlas Terrain Editor. And that's what we're going to check out today. So you see here, it's normally 90 bucks. You're getting it in a bundle for 30. So you're getting it at a third of its normal price. And then you're basically getting all the rest of this stuff completely free. Uh, so if you are in the market for an upgraded train editor for the Unity game engine, uh, this is a great time to pick one up. So this is Atlas Train Editor. It basically allows you to, it's an extension to the train system in the Unity game engine and allows you to do some really kind of neat and interesting things, particularly treat uh, various different train brushes or height maps as stamps that you can use multiple times in creating your own train. I'll show you exactly how this process works. Uh, well, how about right now? So here we are in the demo project for uh, Atlas Terrain. Now there are demo projects available. You come on in here to the Atlas Terrain engine and you will find there is a samples folder. You'll find there is one for the ERP, for the standard pipeline and for the HDRP. I'm showing you the HDRP example today just randomly because. Uh, then you'll notice once you've picked it, it'll open up in demo and this is the demo in action. Uh, kind of showcases, this is a typical Unity train. So you can see the train here, all your typical controls over there. The only difference is it has this Atlas Unity terrain renderer script attached to it and on top of that you have this preview volume that is kind of like the master control switch here for the entire process and you click this little guy to go into editing mode i'll show you this from the very beginning in just a second what you're going to notice here is this circle here shows you it in high detail so this little volume is actually showing you a high res rendering of the actual train you're currently looking at and then train itself is made up of a number of different stamps you see here we've got for example this mountain stamp here, and let me just go ahead and we can move it. You see how they kind of all go ahead and blend together? Pretty cool stuff. And on top of that, you've also got the option with splines. So for example, this river over here is controlled by splines like so. You're gonna notice splines have tools on them to automatically like adhere to your landscape and so on. Uh, so pretty neat stuff. And then of course, when you zoom right in, you're gonna notice uh, throughout the world, there's actually um, all, let's go out of edit mode here. And go ahead and proceed. This is going to take a sec, so I'll pause while it does this. All right, so all throughout the world, you're also going to notice there are trees being scattered throughout the land. That's another feature of this plugin, so it can basically dispense uh, foliage, rocks, trees, etc., around the world. Although, to be honest, in this regard, I think the built-in tools uh, from the Blender train system are actually better. And here's another example of this trench here is being carved out using a stamped spline as well. So let's actually go ahead and show you how this actually works uh, by creating a new scene. So we're going to create a new outdoor scene. We're not going to save our changes here. Uh, and it's actually pretty easy to get this guy up and going. Obviously, you're going to need to add it to your project. So basically go into your project manager, uh, go to my assets over here, find Atlas like so, and then basically download it and import it into your project. Once you have done that, uh, it's basically a matter of, well, first things first, you're gonna have to create a train object. So go into 3D object, uh, train like so, and then boom, you're good to go. And then on top of that, what you're going to do is add an Atlas train renderer. Uh, and then now that is attached. By the way, if you wanna use scattering, so if you wanna place things around the world, you're going to have to grab this guy over here. Now this is actually kind of a work in progress thing. So you edit, you edit using predefined stamps, and then when you're done, you actually click render, and it renders it down to the final terrain. We're not gonna do that in this demo, but I am going to show you the next step, which is to go up here, preview volume, Unity, and then you can go ahead and create this preview volume here. And this is at the same, t in this case, you're gonna see it's this, this rectangle over here. It's the exact same size as our train. So you really, only if you're having a really large train are you gonna have to pan it around. Uh, and the train volume can automatically move things in, uh, like it automatically moves to go with your camera as you're going through the world. But in this case, I have a one-to-one -one relationship between the size of my preview volume and my terrain. So now that we've done that, we wanna go into editing mode. So boom, we are now in editing mode. Now this is where the magic starts to happen. You can start using uh, stamps. Now stamps are basically prefab slash uh, height maps. And you actually can go ahead and you create your own, by the way. So you can come in here and go create, uh, and then Atlas somewhere in here, where are you? Um, I do wish this was better, oh, it's right at the very top. Okay, Unity, 
stamp. So you can create your own stamps. Uh, basically, that is if you bring in a height map that you created in another tool like World Machine or whatever, uh, you can import them in and use them on your own. So let's go ahead and use some of the built-in stamps. There's something like 60 built-in stamps. Uh, so over here, we're going to go uh, stamps like so, basic stamps. And then you've got a number of different options here. So let's say I want to go ahead and add in some mountains into my world. I just grab a mountain stamp and I drop it into my world. And then boom, you can like basically start dragging them around in the world. Now, uh, these are actually still being controlled by basically a height map. So if you want to change the way this individual stamp works, you can actually come in and edit the mask. Your controls are over here. Uh, so now I can basically start uh, drawing or painting directly on that mask or we can go down like so. So this is basically just changing the intensity of the height map that is controlling that stamp. But as you can see, you can control it using mask painting over here. You obviously have a ton of different controls over here. Now, another thing that I should have done before getting further into this, uh, so when you do this yourself, you're gonna wanna come in here. I believe it's right here, no, no, it's right here, you're going to want to come in and define all your various different terrain layers. So you're going to want to have like your grass layers, your rock layers, and so on. I didn't want to go through this process, but it, so if you, you know, as it goes up in elevation, it paints you with the right textures and so on. It has a number of them set up. If you check their documentation, they have a recommended order for defining those terrain layers, but I would have done that before continuing into here. And there you see uh, how we bring in that one particular stamp. So you can basically treat these stamps as prefabbed height map Lego blocks for building your train. So if I wanted to do another stamp here I could bring in um, okay what do I want to bring in so BS ones by the way are spline driven I'll show you that in just a second let's just bring in a hill so let's drop a hill into our world we'll drop it in over here and then again you see you just sort of you can move these things around by the way you can actually use standard controls so I can I can scale things up and down and so on. And then basically you can start building your terrains out of these building blocks of height maps. And again, those height maps can be created in other tools that you are working with. So again, if you're using something like World Machine uh, to generate the height maps, you can create it there and import them in here. Uh, again, I showed you how to actually go about creating that as an asset over there. And then the one last thing to showcase here is again, we've got uh, the split. Um, the spline based one. So let's go here, stamps, pick one of these BS ones. So if you want to do roads or cliffs or whatever, so let's do a river. You just drop one of these in, drop the river into your scene like so. And then what you're going to notice is you've got standard control points over here and over here. Uh, you can actually define a material for this guy, by the way. So let's do this green water, for example. And then you can use controls like this to, um, Oops, I'm in train mode right now. That's one thing I do find is you find that you're selecting outside of things pretty easy. Uh, you'll notice over here, your controls are over here. So I'm holding shift to add a new control point. But if you need to add a river that run, winds through your train like this, you can do it that way. Uh, and then when you are done, you basically come on over here, you stop editing. It's gonna say, uh, is about to alter your train. So this is altering the underlying train at this point in time. And then uh, boom. It has edited it out. Now, I didn't set up any of those height maps, so we're getting really weird results. We're not getting grass or snow or whatever at the various different heights. But you get an idea of exactly how this guy works. There's other tools involved with it as well. Um, so again, you do have the scattering tool. So if you select this guy over here, you've got control over that. Uh, you can, if you notice over here, create uh, a scattering rule, which will show how things are deployed around which map to draw them on and so on. You create the scatter stack of things like, again, rocks and forests, etc., to draw across your world. Uh, and yeah, that's basically the idea behind it. So let's head on back over here again. So that was Atlas. The entire thing is non-destructive. Uh, so until you actually go into your train and render it out. So if until I go over here and go down and click this guy right here, uh, no destructivity is actually happening. Uh, then it's basically baking in. So you do have those spline controls for doing things like cliffs, rivers, and so on. Um, again, it uses basically like this prefabby approach. There's 58 total prefab stamps to get you started. Obviously, you can create your own stamps, basically any train generator or something like, again, World Machine, World Creator, Gaia. Uh, and you can also export out from here. So your generated results can be exported as a height map, global normal map, color map, and up to 16 splat maps. It does have scattering. Again, I did find that the built-in scattering tools are actually more intuitive than the ones that came with this. So that's why I'm not really focusing on that this much in this video. Uh, but it is a definite interesting project. It's, it's normally, again, 90 bucks. If you catch this video uh, as I'm actually, you know, releasing it within a couple of days, uh, you're getting this guy for 30 bucks in this bundle. 
and then you're getting everything else in this bundle for free. So there's actually some really other cool stuff here, especially if you're interested just in terrain. So you can see here you have the forest pack down here, the foliage pack over here, um, and a couple of other terrain-oriented assets in here. So we've got some geometry-based things as well. Uh, so they all kind of would work together. It's, again, it's a kind of an eclectic mixed bundle, but it boils down to it. If there's one asset in this bundle that appeals to you, you're kind of getting everything else for free. So in this case, you're getting this thing at 66% off, and on top of that, you're getting all the rest of this stuff thrown in free. If you're watching this sometime in the future, sorry you missed your deal, I will leave a link to the Atlas um, direct asset store if you want to pick it up. Maybe it's on sale in the future or whatever, or you're just going to want to buy it at full price. It is kind of a unique tool because it gives you that ability to create these um, these train maps, basically these stamps of height maps that you basically use as virtual Lego blocks, make building trains a rapid tool. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the Atlas Train Editor uh, available in the 30 for 30, hum oh, not humble bundle, the uh, asset store bundle available here. By the way, if you use my link down below, I do get a small mission and I very much appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think of this asset. I'm not going to ask you if there's anything else you want to see me cover here because quite frankly, <laughs> we're out of time. This is a two week only bundle. I don't know why they made this buying window so short, uh, but they did. But truth of the matter is the only other asset anyone else showed any kind of like that everything else here is pretty straightforward. The only one that people were kind of interested in was Grid Builder, and I didn't think there was enough there to do a video about it. Uh, it's a neat little tool, uh, and hey, if you pick up Atlas, you're going to get it for free. All right, so let me know what you think of Atlas Train Editor and this bundle in general, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.